with his uh, five-minute right of reply, l'honorable député de saint léonard saint michel Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, as has already been stated in the House, this bill is not revolutionary, yet it's an important piece of legislation. It has been abundantly clear that we need to modernize our criminal code on prize fighting, since the provisions related to this issue have not been updated since 1934. Some combat sports, such as Taekwondo, are already sanctioned in Olympic competitions, yet are still technically legal in Canada, even though provinces have been applied have applied creative interpretation of the law in order to allow these sports to be practiced by Canadians. We do know that some of the Canadians have concerns about combat sports. For example, during Justice Committee hearings on this bill, we heard that the Canadian Medical Association tell us about their opposition to combat sports in general, while at the same time we also heard testimony from another doctor telling us he is supportive of combat, combative sports as long as they are properly regulated. Therefore, as parliamentarians, our focus should be to make sure that these sports ensure the security of the fighters. When testifying before committee, the Canadian Medical Association stated that no studies exist that have shown mixed martial arts to be more dangerous than other combat sports. What do we know? What we do know is that there are some studies that show that MMA competitions cause fewer severe injuries than other contact sports such as boxing. The reason for this is simple. In MMA, participants can perform various submission maneuvers which cause their opponents to tap out before they suffer substantial injuries. In boxing, the only way to win before time expires is by knockout or technical knockout, which is why boxers often deliver or receive hundreds of punches to the head in a single competition. MMA requires a more cautious approach than boxing because in addition to defending against direct strikes, MMA fighters must also defend against being taken down by wrestling maneuvers, being caught in submission or chokeholds. As a result, boxing has higher knockout rates than MMA, which also means that mixed martial arts are less likely to suffer brain injuries than boxers. This has been confirmed by researchers from John Hopkins University who published an article in the Journal of Sports of uh, Science and Medicine in 2006 where they compared the wounds sustained during different types of sports. Their conclusions are that minor injuries sustained in MMA such as facial lacerations and broken noses are overall similar to injuries sustained in boxing. This study also suggested that the risk of brain damage is lower in MMA than boxing, kickboxing and other similar combat sports because MMA con con contests, contests end with a knockout less frequently. We know that mixed martial arts aren't more dangerous than other combat sports. We know that other popular sports such as karate and taekwondo are practiced by millions of Canadians including children. Yet, given this knowledge, what these sports all have in common is that they officially aren't legally, uh, they aren't legal according to the Canadian Criminal Code. Does this mean that millions of Canadians are criminals? Such an assertion is laughable. It is our responsibility as parliamentarians to ensure the laws that govern our society evolve to reflect the reality of the time in which we live, which is why it's time for us to modernize the price fighting provisions in our criminal code. La dimension économique est aussi importante à mentionner. Des armes mixtes connaissent une forte propriété qui continuera vraisemblablement de croître dans les années à venir. Les spectateurs canadiens représentent déjà un quart des spectateurs mondiaux. Les, les organisateurs du UFC, la plus grosse compétition des arts martiaux mixtes, adorent le Canada puisqu'ils peuvent facilement remplir les stades. Tout indique, indique que le Canada sera l'hôte de plus en plus de compétitions à devenir. On parle donc d'un énorme potentiel en retombée touristique. En modernisant le code criminel, nous retirons un frein au développement de cette industrie au Canada, sans pour autant faire la promotion des sports des combats. Mr. Speaker, because the point of this bill isn't to encourage or dissuade Canadians from participating in the sport of mixed martial arts or taekwondo or karate or judo, Canadians are smart enough to decide that for themselves. This bill simply seeks to clarify the law so that Canadians can participate in these sports safely and legally by giving the provinces proper tools to regulate these popular sports, which is why I invite all my colleagues to vote in favor of passing this bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah.